Today I'm going to teach you how to import airfoils into SOLIDWORKS. There are some idiosyncrasies about dealing with airfoils and importing airfoil data, so I think the, f the best thing to do is start in Excel. We're going to import a NACA 0012, or I'm sorry, no, this is a 0010. Um, and usually when you import airfoil data, it's going to be two column format. You'll notice here this airfoil data starts at the trailing edge and then it ends at the trailing edge. It's one continuous set of data. Um, first thing you'll need to do is when you import that data, whether you get it from XFOIL or Profili or online at a UIUC site, first thing you need to do is add a column of zeros. You can either add it, add it to the beginning or the end column because SOLIDWORKS expects XYZ data. The other thing you're going to notice is that some airfoil data doesn't actually quite go to the trailing edge or at the trailing edge it doesn't go to zero. In other words, the airfoil doesn't close. There's a very small gap at the trailing edge. Different ways to handle that, but the easiest way to deal with it is to just go ahead and add a data point here that's one zero at the trailing edge and then again at the other end of the the data set one zero that way the airfoil will actually close in the imported data now the other thing that I've learned is that it really helps you manipulate the airfoil in SOLIDWORKS if you split the airfoil in half top and bottom so what you'll do is you'll you'll split the data you'll notice here this data goes to the leading edge which is at zero zero so you'd split that into a top surface goes from the trailing edge to zero zero leading edge and then the bottom go from zero zero leading edge to one zero trailing edge and this is what that looks like plotted so you see you have a closed airfoil it's made up of two sets of data bottom and top so now we're ready to import that data into SOLIDWORKS you need to export that data into comma delimited text exporting this data can sometimes be tricky out of Excel so let me show you what what works for me and you may find a better way to do this but I want to export the top surface data here so I I go up here to export change file type comma delimited and save and I'm gonna save this as a comma delimited file alright then I'm gonna close it and there is that comma delimited file I'm gonna change the name to top and then sometimes uh, SOLIDWORKS won't recognize the the CSV so sometimes what you'll need to do is come in here and change the file type change it from CSV to TXT now if you open that data file you'll see it's a bunch of comma delimited data now for some odd reason it added a whole bunch of extra commas here so I'm just gonna delete those and that data file looks good now so now I'm ready to import let's import that airfoil into SOLIDWORKS now I've got a new part here and under features I go to the end curves curve through XYZ points and I'm gonna browse for that file that we made and you see it only allows you to import solid curve files or text files but the text file has to be comma delimited that's the trick 
So you see I've got my bottom surface and top surface file there. So let's go ahead and import the bottom one first. And you see it imports everything. It assumes it's millimeters and that and that's fine. We can always change that. Hit OK. And you see there it imported it, that little blue dot on the screen. So I need to rescale that. And there you see there's the there's the bottom surface of the airfoil. So let me go ahead and repeat that process. Browse. Change to text files. And now import top. And there we go. There is our complete airfoil. So now let's do something with that airfoil. Because of the coordinate system we used, that airfoil is going to be in the right plane. So let's go ahead and create a sketch in the right plane here. You notice your airfoil. And so easiest thing to do is uh, click on Convert Entities. Select the top and bottom. And there we go. There's our airfoil. Now let's do something with this airfoil. What I usually like to do is rename this sketch to the airfoil. We'll call that NACA 0010 and that becomes my my base airfoil. And what I'll often do, let's say if I, I want to use this airfoil in different locations on an airplane, I can I can use it on a wing, I can use it on a tail, wherever I want to use it. I can go up here to to copy and then I can I can paste it and so we can call it something else. Let's call that that wing. And I can put that on any on any plane that I like. So if I want to put it on the top plane now instead of the other plane, you see I put it over here. I can locate it anywhere I want. And if that original airfoil is sort of is sort of in your way or it, it's bothering you to look at it, you know, you can you can hide these and you just keep them for reference. That original airfoil you really can't modify, but now that it's copy you can. I can come in here and edit this airfoil. And this is the reason I like to split the airfoil into top and bottom surfaces. Because I can come in here and define a center line. And let's say I want to make that airfoil one foot. I can make it one foot long. It shows it in millimeters now. But I also have this horizontal reference here. I can use this to to create uh, angles if I want to if I want to make a relation between that and some other angle. I can do that. I can I can uh, I can change the properties. I can I can shift I can shift it around. Um, and so it just gives you it just gives you a lot better control of the airfoil in the parameters that we understand because this line is now the chord line and I can scale based on the chord line without it getting distorted. I can also change the angles of attack without distortions. And I think you you'll see it just makes your life easier. So now you can use this airfoil in any way you want. You can extrude it, you can you can you can use it in different locations, you can twist it, whatever you need to do. That's how you import airfoils into SolidWorks.